I oh, better get those feet tapping, fingers snapping, all hands clapping. Buckle up, gobble some popcorn. It's the Mickle Pot and Pickle with Mickle. And here we go. Just another manic Monday as we wait for the madness to begin Thursday. I know there are play-in games they are playing in for the big dance on Thursday. Before any of it begins, let's go back to how it ended on Sunday. History at the players. Surely the legend and story will grow as pints continue to flow. I I saw the hand of a leprechaun that threw the ball back at Wyndham Clark's feet. There would be no playoff with Scotty Scheffler, who repeats... As players champion, let that marinate, play off. And I think there was a leprechaun in that hole that dumped that thing right back at Wyndham Clark's feet. There is no other way to explain how that putt came out of the hole if other to explain the fact that it was Scotty Scheffler's to have. It was Scotty's moment. And you have to go back. And remember that. Playoff. Also, kudos to one of the best in-moment on-air calls. Here comes Scheffler out of the champion's locker room where he belongs. Yes, he does. And that was when Scheffler was heading to the practice green as the final groups were running out of time, dealing with the final two holes. Yet three had a chance. A chance to force a playoff. Remember that? We're letting it marinate? That whole thing. This all was coming down for a chance to force a playoff. Harmon, Brian Harmon, major champion. Wyndham Clark, major champion, playing some of the best golf on tour this year, week in, week out. Remember, it's Wyndham Clark, who's won like three events already, and most recently had a major, and Harmon was open champion of the year. You got Zamber, Xander, triple X, Shawfle, Souffle, three strikes, X, you're out. Still the best to not have a major. Is he? Now, it's not the title you want on tour. How long did Sergio hold on to that thing? Now still, Xander has it. He knows it. He cannot shake it. Back-to-back bogeys, 14 and 15. It, it felt like it was already Scheffler's. Back-to-back title, once he caught the leaders at 19 under, back when he birdied number 12. I guess the field felt it too. They had a stat. They talked about it. Players, champions, birdie the 12th hole on Sunday. Xander did that. To win the players, you make that putt on 17. To win the players, the fifth major, right? The other major, golf's other major. You can't put the drive on 18 into the straw. To win tournaments, majors, you come out, you go low. To seal history, you come out, you blow by the field with a clean sheet. Six birdies, one hole out eagle, number six, keep track, Scotty and his caddy are. How cool was that little back and forth early in the round Sunday on the fourth hole when Scheffler hold out? Scheffler is one cool customer. Winning the players once is nice. Twice, and you are in rare air indeed. Couples, Sutton, Elkington, D-Love 3, Tiger Tiger Woods, y'all. Nicholas, he's won it three times. A repeat, Sunday was the first time. Scheffler is the only guy. And just in time to blast another shot in the Tour Wars... Because guys on the 50 door, four door can't play at the players. They can play at Augusta. There are a few we know in the field. There are three more events on the PGA Tour until the Masters. The PGA better hope that Scotty keeps playing. Though his neck might say take a break. He wants that green jacket. I'm going to start saying Scheffler of the field. What say you? <laughs> Say, how about you figure out how to get that green dye out of your hair? You're saying it's in your beard? 
Just go with it. And go to ValhallaBeardAndBody.net to let it shine. Use promo code MIC15. Get the best for your beard and your face at ValhallaBeardAndBody.net. That felt awkward, was awkward, and is okay. Because today, Monday, March the 18th, is Awkward Moments Day. Today is also National Supreme Sacrifice Day. Though, I don't think that directly correlates to sacrificing work time to fill out brackets, enter bracket challenges, and start moving that 16 seed to the sweet 16. Slap it, Joe. Slap, slap it, Joes. I love them. It's a sloppy day outside. Go for a sloppy Joe. It's National Sloppy Joe Day. I mean, can you have a better day? I go manwich for my sloppy Joes all day. Traditional manwich. I'll say it again. Any day is a good day for a sloppy Joe, though. Sloppy is all that could be used to describe the weather in Austin over the weekend down there for the PPA showdown. Action resumes for Championship Monday. That's the day, folks. Except for men's doubles. Andre Diascu, Big Dre, that's in beta, and Matt Wright win. Brothers John's not making that final. How about Diascu? Can he and Anna Bright take down Annalie Whiplash, Waters, and Ben Johns? How about Fed? I say yes, I'm sticking by it. I think Fed will be Ben in singles. And you know I'm cheering for Judith Castillo Bamuz. There's Anna Bright again. I like her and Rohrbacher. I think that should be a great battle for the women's dubs title. Bright? Miami is, and that is where the APP is going to be for Chase APP, Miami Open, as well as the Atlantic Cup. The APP is also bringing the beat, folks. APP Pickleball Beats on March 22nd. Music. Food sounds like a lot of fun down there in South Beach. You got DJ Irie starting things off. And the headliner, none other than Shaggy. This Atlantic Cup is the real headliner. These events are great. APP has been involved in international events. They were over in, they did some things with the uh, Swedish team. They've done some other things, I believe, in England. This event is the first time for an event to be endorsed both by USA Pickleball and European Pickleball Federation. First of all, what ball are they using? Go Team USA. You can all go and listen to my most recent interviews with Sorry Not Sorry Pickleball and Tracy Wilcox. I have another awesome interview set for this week. Toiler, local talent, a rising young star. Today's MLP Australia Spotlight, Southern Stars, they're hitting the court with Yai Grual, Connor Robertshaw, Yu Chin Say, and just go follow her at XYB underscore Pickleball on Instagram. You got to go check out MLP Australia. We've got three teams down, and I'm going to keep breaking them down to keep you in the know. Right now, I'm going mad. Madness, you say? Brackets, baby. Brackets. Except I've got further thoughts on free agency. What in the hell did the Bears just do? Oh, my gosh. Okay, let's take a mental break. If if you are craving cool stuff that works on the course or court, hats, hoodies, go to CravenGolf.com. Check out this awesome stuff. Use my promo code. Mick Golf. That's Mick Golf at CravenGolf.com. The Mickle Pod and Pickle with Mickle is all new twice a week. All major podcast apps. Earbuds in. Podcorn ready. It's back to the show. Okay, before the break, I was talking some free agency. You know what? Forget about it. It's a most wonderful time of the year. Champion. Now we have to find out where we stand. Look at that. Behind the back. It's 
You better get ready for moments to shine. I love March Madness. And if you're looking for drawn out explanations of this seed does this, this coach has always done that, you might like this. You might want to keep listening to the madness everywhere leading up to Thursday. This will not be a perfect bracket. It will not be the only bracket I fill out. It is the bracket I'm filling out for all of you, with all of you, right now. Well, I did it. You're getting it. Pre-play-in games. Reckless abandon rounds. One and two. Whoo, the sweetness of 16. Greatness of the eight. All the way to Phoenix right here. And the final four. It's only Monday, March the 18th. Let the madness begin. <laughs> <laughs> Starting in the East, this is round one, which will be played March 21st and March 22nd. I see number one overall seed, Yukon. Moving on, they're going to beat the 16th seed, Stetson team. I also have Florida Atlantic. That's right, eight over nine. Let's keep it rolling. San Diego State moves on. Over UAB, I've got Auburn beating Yale. Hello, Duquesne. Give me Duquesne. Over BYU. Illinois gets past Moorhead State. I'll take Drake over the Cougs from Palouse. And that's right, South Dakota State is going to sneak in there and beat the clones. Clones go home in round one. First Big upset, South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits send home Iowa State and the Clones. Let's move right to the West. North Carolina is going to take out the winner of that 16-team play-in game. So it doesn't really matter who wins that one. They will face Michigan State. Folks, if you want one of those, this coach does that. Tom Izzo wins in the first round. I know the Bulldogs, Mississippi State, they're hot. I don't pick against Izzo in the first round of the tournament. I see a 12 in Grand Canyon. They play right around here. Guess what? They're not beating St. Mary's. I got St. Mary's moving on. I have Alabama moving on as well. How about New Mexico? Am I big on 11s? I'm big on Rick Pitino. Some more coaches who know how to win in the tournament. Give me them over a Clemson team that hasn't been that great this year. They're going to face Baylor in the second round. They're going to take out a feisty Colgate team. Baylor, well, we'll see how game the Bears are this year. I've got a huge 7-10 matchup, but I got Dayton, the Flyers, flying past Nevada to meet Arizona. A lot of people are going to think Long Beach State and those dub all-stars are going to beat the Cats in the first round. I'm going to give the Cats a first round win. We're going to jump all the way over to the Midwest where I've got Purdue getting past whichever team they get as a 16 seed this year. Purdue going to get that win in the first round. They're going to take on TCU in the second round. TCU going to get past Utah State, I see some Zags in the tournament. Zags moving into the round of 32. They're going to see Kansas. Kansas will get past Samford, though. Watch out. Kansas has not been playing very well. Is Samford a 13 that can live the dream? I've got South Carolina going past the Ducks. Look, I've already been liking 11s on the other side. That's just how it goes. They're going to find some Jays in their path. Cox against Jays in the second round. Creighton takes out the Zips. Zip home Akron. How about this matchup of a 7-10 Texas facing the winner of UVA and Colorado State. One of those tricky little play-in games no matter, I've got Texas advancing. They're going to face Tennessee. Ooh, my goodness. We got to get up. Go, 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 go to the south. Last of the round one. South region, Houston. 
No, are they the number one overall seed or is it UConn? Doesn't matter. They're a number one. They're going to beat the 16 Longwood. They're going to play Texas A&M. It's going to get past Nebraska. I see Dukes beating the Badgers. James Madison moves on. Dukes against Duke. I've got Duke beating the Catamounts. You're going to hear a lot about 13 seeds. I think Duke pulls this one off, even though I do like Vermont to beat them. How about NC State? There's the pack. Texas Tech. Give me State riding that ACC title for a victory in the tournament. They're going to have the Cats from Kentucky. I see Kentucky getting past Oakland. And now here we go. I have got the winner. I've got the 10 seed in this game beating Florida. Whoever comes through that matchup is going to beat Florida. I like it to be Colorado. They're going to face Marquette. And so far, we've got the first round complete. you got to keep up. We're going to keep moving on. In the round of 32, let's stay right in the South. Houston will advance over Texas A&M. The Aggies might keep it close. Houston, folks, is looking good. Don't, don't worry about what, you know, whatever just happened in, in the, in the tournament games. I can talk about that. I'll probably talk about it leading up to the tournament. It, it, they lost. Carolina lost. Did you see how state got in? I mean, they mirrored the last time they won a title from 30 some years ago in 1987. You can't beat those kind. You can't, yeah, you, you just can't, can't fight fate, right? So it was, it was fate for state. To get that one, Carolina needed to drop it. You got to win six games, folks, to win a tournament. It's okay to lose one before the tournament starts. You got to go on that run. Again, Houston Duke, I see that. Again, sorry, Dukes. Duke gets through. Wouldn't surprise me. James Madison could. Again, this is March Madness. It's crazy. You got to flip-flop. I'm going to do probably 17 brackets and just drive myself nuts. I see Kentucky getting past NC State. And then I do see... Marquette getting past that 10 seed that I already said was going to be Colorado. The Buffs. Is primetime going to be there? We're looking for primetime at the tournament. I bet he's going to be there. Let's move down second round in the Midwest. I'm going to give Purdue another win. They're going to get past the Horny Frogs. They're going to meet Gonzaga. Buckle up for that. Gonzaga is going to beat Kansas. Kansas not that good. Is this the year of the Zags? I've been saying that every year for a little while. This could be it. I like the Jays. I see Creighton beating South Carolina. I see Tennessee getting past Texas. Let's run it right over into the West. There's Arizona. There's Dayton. There's Dayton getting past the Cats. They're not going to bear down. Dayton flies through to meet New Mexico. Big matchup right there. An 11 and a 7. Moving through to the 16. Buckle up. We'll get back there. Now we're going to head up. I see St. Mary's. Oh, wait. Yes. I see St. Mary's. I see Alabama. I see Bama getting through. And in a huge second round matchup, if anything, tradition and name, North Carolina, Michigan State. The heels are going to get past Michigan State. Might be close for a little while. Might be even closer than I think. I see Carolina getting through. Now we are through to the Sweet 16. And I see North Carolina against Alabama. I see New Mexico against Dayton. I see Tennessee against Creighton. I see Purdue and Gonzaga. I see Marquette and Kentucky. And I see Duke and Houston. I see UConn and San Diego State, and I see Illinois and South Dakota State. I see a lot. And what do I see? I see UConn getting through in the East to play Illinois in the East Regional Final. That means I am going to see Houston getting through Duke. I'm going to see Marquette passing Kentucky. Okay, so now we're getting down into, we've got our East Regional Final. We've got our South Regional Final. UConn, Illinois, a 1-3. Houston, Marquette, 
a one, two. We got two, four. We're going to go down. We're going to go down to the west. All right. I see North Carolina beating Alabama. I've got New Mexico heading in there over Dayton. Tennessee past Creighton. Gonzaga getting past Purdue. So again, now for the West Regional, number one, North Carolina against New Mexico and 11 in the Midwest, a two Tennessee, a five Gonzaga. And then again, just to repeat, we had up top here in the South, Houston Marquette, Yukon, Illinois, two, four, six, eight teams to make up what will be that final four. They got to get there first. So how do we see it? Let's start right in the Midwest. Regional final, Tennessee, Gonzaga. Go Zags. Go Heels out of the West. Of course, I'm biased to the Heels and I can handle it if they lose. If anywhere, it'll be in the Sweet 16. They get through the Sweet 16. They're on their way to Phoenix. Write that down. Now, in the East, okay, here we go. UConn, looking to repeat. Scheffler just repeated. I like UConn's chances. At least I like them getting past Illinois. Ha! Ah, how about Houston? I like Houston too. What about Marquette? I'm going to stay with Houston. What does that give me? That gives me three number one seeds in the final four with a number five Gonzaga. How do you like them apples? I like it pretty good. It lines up pretty well for North Carolina. Deja vu all over again. Carolina, Gonzaga, State Farm Stadium, Glendale. Hello, 2017 in 2024. Seven years apart. Seven's a great number. I got the heels winning. And if the Zags are going to get their title, how fitting they get another shot at the best college basketball team, the North Carolina Tar Heels. Like I said, I'm biased and I can be. Be sure to tune in Friday. We will be in round one. How are we doing? How busted will the bracket be? Will the number one survive the weekend? I have a great interview scheduled Wednesday that will help us all over the hump and into the madness. Figure out who it is. Stay safe out there. Stay hydrated. I'll see y'all, y'all, next time for more.